I was dreaming again. The dream. The one with Jason. An array of colorful lights lit the room, and the spiced scents of cinnamon and clove permeated my senses. For one brief moment, I was home. Then I heard running in the distance. A disruption. I felt the wind of the basketball as it flew past my face. Heard the loud crash as it struck down the nearby canvas. My masterpiece. Damn it, Jason! I spat. How many times have I told you not to play with that ball in the house? I'm sorry, Dad. The boy was petrified, but I didn't care. I don't want to hear it. I'm done with you. Go to your goddamn room. Now! I came to regret those words. Far too late. <laughs> Wetness streamed down the boy's flushed cheeks. He scurried away then, and slammed the bedroom door behind him. Good riddance, I thought. I went over to assess the damage. Not as bad as I'd feared. And so, despite Jason's distant sobs, I returned to my work. Amidst the last embers of the dying fire, I listened knowing it would not take long for Jason's cries to fade away. And then, blissful silence. I awoke with a start, inhaled the pungent odor of rot, and felt the cold sting of rough concrete on my bare back. Oh, my head hurt. What happened? I looked down and gasped. I was naked, tied up, and left to rot on the floor of some dank cell. I wished I were dreaming, but my pounding skull told me otherwise. Despite a sudden wave of nausea, I weakly sat up. The room spun as though I had just emerged from heavy anesthesia. Where the hell was I? And more importantly, how was I going to get out? After a moment, I cautiously rose to my feet to better examine my surroundings. I was trapped inside a cramped, dimly lit prison cell. Spiderwebs littered the ceiling, and thick layers of dirt and grime told me that the place hadn't been occupied in some time. My movements must have garnered some attention, because a feminine voice suddenly spoke from behind the right cell wall. Hey, you... you awake? Please be awake. Yeah. I'm awake. My hands are tied, though. Where are you? I, I can't see you. I'm locked in this 
cell next to you. You'll need to find something sharp to cut the rope so you can free your hands. There must be something nearby that you can use. See if you can cut yourself free. A green lantern shone brightly and provided the only visible light in the cell. I thoroughly searched the bed. Not easy given that my wrists were tied. On the floor underneath the bed's frame was a dirty penny, dated 1922. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't even bother with it. But given my present condition, I picked up the old penny with my clenched knuckles. A small index card sat upon the cell's table. Something was written on it. I should find a way to free my arms first. I tried to open the cell door, but as expected, it was firmly locked. The cell door was firmly locked. There was no way I was getting out of here without the key. A worn, stain-filled mattress sat on the rusted bed frame. It still flushes. That's a relief. The old toilet was covered in dirt. While the water inside the bowl was brown from age, it was mercifully clear of excrement. I tried to unscrew the grate cover by hand, but the screws were too tight. A scratched metal grate cover was secured to the wall by four screws. The faucet knob turned, but no water emerged. The rusted sink was dry, as though it hadn't been turned on yet. With the penny, I loosened and removed three of the great cover's four screws. The cover fell open. Behind it were a set of metal bars, one of which was broken with a sharp edge. I dropped to my knees and positioned the rope binding my hands so that it pressed upon the sharp edge of the broken metal bar. I then began to shift my arms back and forth vigorously so that the rope rubbed against the jagged edge. The rope snapped within seconds, and my arms were freed. Okay, I'm free. Good. Now, see if there's a key somewhere nearby. I found a key in my cell, but it won't open my cell door. Maybe you'll have better luck.
the cell door was... a note inside your cell? Yep. You too? It says to meet some new friends in the cafeteria. Mine too. Too bad we can't get out of here, huh? I found a small key. Try it on the cell door. It's not working. It must not be the right key. I was afraid of that. My name's Jessica, by the way. Jessica Bartlett. But all my friends call me Jesse, so you can too. William Thane. Do you remember how you got here, Jesse? I'm afraid not. I was driving home from work around 10. The next thing I remember is waking up here. The last thing I remember is going to bed. Hey, maybe you'll be lucky and this will all turn out to be one big nightmare. <laughs> I wish. Um, can I ask you an odd question? Do you have any clothes on? No. Another little memory I'm missing. Last I remember I was fully clothed. Do you know how long you've been here? I've been awake about 15 minutes. Who knows how long I was here before that. I tried to wake you, by the way. I called out, but you just kept on snoring. You were mumbling in your sleep, too. Were you dreaming? I thought of Jason, and heard my own harsh words echo through my head. Yes, about my son. Oh, so I take it you're married? Uh, not anymore. Has anyone walked by your cell, or did you hear anyone else? I wouldn't have known you were there either if it weren't for your snoring. Where do you work, Jesse? The Busy Mart, one of those crappy 24-hour convenience stores. You? Oh, I'm... I'm currently unemployed. Oh. Okay. There must be a way out of here. Your guess is as good as mine. This hey, William. Maybe we have each other's keys. Let's swap. Your cell is too far away, Jesse. I won't be able to hand the key to you. Maybe we could toss the keys to each other. But what if one of us misses the catch? We'd lose the key. Hmm, good point. Let me know if you come up with something.
I have an idea, Jesse. Let's swap keys. I tied my key to the piece of rope that bound my hands. I'll hold on to the rope and throw the key to you. If you don't catch it, I can pull the key back and try again. Great idea, Will. I'll do the same. Jessie followed suit and threw me the key she'd found in her own cell. I caught it on the second try. Let's hope this works. I should take the lantern with me before leaving the cell, or I won't be able to see. I stepped out of the cell, turned around, and found myself inside a long, narrow hall that led in several directions, including south. I quickly spotted Jesse sitting nervously in another cell to the northwest. Jesse, why are you still in the cell? I don't want to leave here until you find us some clothes. A ward. faded photo of a young woman still sat inside a picture frame on the desk. I wonder whose this was. The logbook contained a list of garbage. I picked up the phone. No dial tone. Of course. I wondered whether this old speaker was used for general announcements or to sound an alarm. Maybe both. The locker wouldn't open due to the combination padlock on its handle. The locker wouldn't open due locker wouldn't open. Dude. A piece of masking tape was stuck onto the front of the locker. On it, written in black sharpie, was the letter J.
combination worked. I removed the padlock and opened the lock. These clothes were a welcome sight. I placed the lantern on the guard's desk and quickly got dressed. These prison garbs weren't exactly the latest fashion, but they fit well enough. After tightening the pants as best I could, I grabbed the walkie-talkie and picked up the lantern. photograph of a young woman. Written on it were the words, with love, Michelle. Most of the journal was blank, and several pages were torn out. Only a few entries remained. There, there was no way that toilet would flush with what was inside it. The bloody handprint on the mirror gave me chills. If I had to guess, I'd say the occupant of this cell was a weightlifter. The occupant of this cell liked to collect travel brochures. I wonder if he ever got to visit any of these places. If I were sent to prison, I'd line the cell walls with any stickers I could find, too. If I were sent to prison... That was one big bloodstain. Something terrible happened here. The bed was flipped on its side, and a large bloodstain covered the mattress. Someone was a baseball fan. The security camera was pointed right at me. It said P-U-K. I still have no idea what that means. Jesse, why are you s I don't want to Well, they're not exactly in style, but I found us some clothes. Those will do. Thanks. Jesse opened the door to her cell, and I handed her the clothes. I waited outside as she dressed. When she was done, Jesse grabbed the lantern from the floor and exited the cell. I handed Jesse the spare walkie-talkie. Here, I found a pair of these, too. You never know when we might need them. 
Jesse nodded and took the device. How do the clothes fit? Well enough, I suppose. Listen, thanks for helping me get out of the cell. Of course, Jesse. We're in this together, after all. I feel the same way, Will. So, I guess we should find the cafeteria, huh? Lead the way. up the notebook and flipped through its pages. Can we hurry up, Will? I want to get out of here. An old movie poster was taped at the wall. I'd never heard of the film. I wonder what the movie was about. Jesse must have found some other way to cut her ropes. The table was bare. It was too dark in the hallway to wander around. The note inside my cell said to meet in the cafeteria, so that's where I decided to go. Jesse and I stepped inside the cafeteria and found ourselves standing before four men. Ah, and the last guests in our little melodrama finally arrive. Please step forward. We walked to the center of the room and the others turned to face us. Looks like I'm the only woman. Figures. Were you all... Locked in cells too? Yes. We all got notes telling us to meet here. We wanted to wake you, but you were both out cold. And we knew each of you had to be awake to get the other out by swapping keys. So we figured it'd be best to wait for you here. My name is Grayson Wilford. This is Gerard Auberon, Sonny Payton, and Louis? Louis Algar, movie star? Don't tell me you haven't heard of him. Sorry. I'm afraid not. <laughs> what do you know? I'm William Thane, but you can all call me Will. Jesse Bartlett. Nice to meet you all. Wonderful. So, now that we're all acquainted, does anyone have the slightest idea how we're going to get out of this place? Well, I suppose we should start by... Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad you could all make it. By now you're probably all wondering why you're here. Well, that's because the six of you share a common trait. Fear. Fear of accepting responsibility for something that has happened to each of you in your past. Something that has been troubling you all for some time. You see, each of you has caused the death of another. Yet none of you has had the courage or decency to accept responsibility for that death. This prison is where you all belong. But somehow, you have all managed to escape justice for your crimes. <laughs> justice. That is a word that is not used nearly enough in our world. But it is something that I know quite well. 
Something that the six of you will learn before the night is over. But I'm nothing if not a decent person. So here is the situation. It is now midnight. The six of you have until 6 a.m. to find a way out of this prison. To get out, you must each come to terms with and accept responsibility for your offenses. If you manage to do this, then you will be free to go. As with all things, however, there is a catch. For every hour it takes you to complete this task, one of you will die as penance for your collective crime. It is only just. So my question to you now is, will you face your fear? You have six hours. That, that was a joke, right? If it was, it wasn't funny. I don't know about the rest of you, but I haven't killed anybody. All right, let's just calm down. Joke or not, we need to find a way out of here. Hey, who made you the boss? The guy's just trying to help us get out of here, man. Leave him alone. Does anyone remember how they got here? Not a damn thing. Today was my day off from work. I visited my sister in the theater, then headed home. I must have fallen asleep in front of the TV or something. At least I think I did. The last thing I remember was leaving my office. I'm a businessman. I don't even remember getting to my car. That was some time ago. I left work at nine. I was on my way home from work too at the Busy Mart, around 10. The last thing I remember was I, I was working on my computer. I'm a web designer. <laughs> I was just putting the finishing touches on a client's new website when I woke up here. I was already in bed. I clearly remember lying down. Someone must have taken me in my sleep. Lewis, would you care to share your story? What story? There's nothing to tell. One minute, I'm in my trailer, getting ready for a night shift. The next, I'm here with all of you. So what are we waiting for? Let's make our way to the exit and get the hell out of here. It's pretty dark in here, though. And I'll bet our captor made sure that most, if not all, of the exits are sealed. Let's split up. One group should go to the basement and find some way to turn on the lights. The rest of us will try to find a way out. What makes you so sure the lights will even work? There must still be power going through this place, or the television and security cameras would not function. I'm staying with Will. I think I'd rather stay here where it's safe. You heard what that message said. We can't stay here. It's not safe. Who knows what's out there? Hey guys, hello. I'll stay here with the kid. Make sure he's all right. The rest of you, go on ahead. Right, like you're doing this for the kid. You just want to save your own ass. Not a kid. 